expanding, creating work expanding. Each month give away 10 grand. Storm riding, storm riders, oh, yeah. submit your Yo, welcome in, guys. Welcome in. Thank you again, Rasul the Nobody. Pumping out that amazing music rap lyric video. Like seriously, amazing, talented thing that he did for the sandstorm. And it just really like ties everything about the sandstorm, the same fam, the same box together. Like such a, a great community piece, really. So we're getting started with our training card game here today, Monday, December 5th. I'm currently making a video and I'm trying to tag Rasul the Nobody. But I don't know what he goes by on Twitter. He's not showing up in my uh, my tags. I just want to get this tweet out real quick. Rasul the Nobody. There he is. The Nobody. I'm going to just make sure to tag him. Tweets out. So uh, today we're going to be making a more formal announcement during the middle of the stream. Uh, but we do have a survey that Sandstorm would like for you builders to answer. So be, you know, stay tuned for that. Uh, for those of you popping in early, which by the way, welcome. Buenos dias, Roxy Miguel, OG Shakespeare, Slater Raid, Go West, Cynthia. Welcome in everybody. Uh, we could go ahead and drop that form for those of you here that are builders in the space, we'll be dropping it again halfway through the stream. But we're looking to uh, kind of just get a community approach towards how much a builder should be earning per project, especially those that are being put up on kind of, you know, a job board that is exclusively the sandstorm. So that form, uh, might give you a little reward if you answer it. So uh, if you scroll down to the bottom of it, you'll you'll see. But yeah, it's worth your time and it's worth Sandstorm's time. So please, please do fill it out. Cool. Now back to what we worked on the past week. I made quite a few trading card game assets. Uh, one thing that we could work on that might be a fun experiment is rolling a dice. So essentially creating a, another RNG form for our games and so using a dice is relatively easy to create and box edit and so if that's something you all would be interested in learning and creating on your own or following along with here here with us uh yeah just ask i think um next session i'll probably plan something out and we can have a really good structured version of building rng uh, specifically with this art this d6 as it's called but for today uh, we're going to be exploring some of the user interface things I've created. Uh, some of which include the animations that we made. So just to take a quick look at an animation, we made these last week. And we animated uh, each of our cards to kind of create an effect on top of our characters. And when this card is played, the effect appears on top of it. So we're going to try and create that effect in Game Maker today, which shouldn't be too difficult as long as we get the meshes correct. And so we can see here with this particular animation, it's like a phoenix kind of like coming up above and spreading its wings. And we can totally add on to this, but this is, you know, like the rough draft. Another thing we might explore as you can see, I've named some of the animations like close or closed. Then we have open, opened. And we're going to be using door behavior, especially with this one, to test some certain mechanics, such as uh, closing and opening it. And then we just have the default animation, which is rise. And so let's go ahead and bring these over into the game maker. Yeah, welcome in, everybody. Hope you all have a fantastic Monday. Thanks for tuning in to the Sandstorm stream. Uh, I'm your host, Half Dork, where usually we're learning how to build things in the sandbox. So for that today, I'm showing you our cards and our animations. So this is our uh, deck of cards. We, we have 10 different cards here. So far, we've made animations for five of them, which we can see here. So we had, they're all like three second animations. 
So we could just sit here and spam this if we wanted to. But when they're played, the animation appears on top of a character. So we're going to be setting up that animation to play if it's a offensive ability on top of our enemy, this toad. And if it's a beneficial ability, it'll play on top of our firefly, which is our character. Uh, over the weekend, I actually consulted with one of my uh, close friends on some mechanics that would be worth adding. And that can be said about anybody out there. If you have mechanics that you think would be a great addition to this game or something you would like to see in a card game, you know, let's talk about it. Like, drop a comment and we can maybe talk it through. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and get started. Uh, essentially, when you select a card, it's going to be playing through an animation. And so we're going to have three cards in our hand. When we select a card, it's playing this animation on loop until we select a target. And we kind of started on that last week, but we didn't have enough time to complete it. Let's go ahead and start setting that up. So here's our uh, checkpoint, like our spawn point. Then we can see here, uh, we have asker behaviors that represent our targets. So when I target something, uh, this is what we set up last week, was our hand has different abilities. So we have three different abilities at a time. And so when I have the first ability selected, it's toggling on the ability to target this character with interact.hand.1. And so we're also going to be setting up the same card to be operable on our ally. However, the problem is, is like, I don't want to attack my ally with a non beneficial card. So that's another kind of mechanic we're going to have to explore. on your Firefly. So do you want to use the card you've selected on your Firefly? So how do we set this up correctly? Aloha! How's it going, Masquita? Welcome. And so this is going to be active. And we might use the toggle message for this ability. Or better yet, we might have more control if we're spawning it. So for example, we'll have asset spawners that spawn these ask, <laughs> asker behaviors, but they're only being spawned when it's an offensive ability spawning this one or a defensive ability spawning this one. There's gonna be a lot of mechanics going on behind the scenes. And honestly, I'm all about it. This is a, a lot of fun for me to explore. And so thank you again to Sandstorm for allowing me to explore such advanced sandbox mechanics here. We have our card one spawn. We have our card two spawn. So these just represent a card. And then we've made our third card here. So we're kind of like decorating our hand a little bit better where these cards will be easier to select. And then I'll go ahead and make a new card. So this is our TCG preset. So we'll get another preset here. Um, we'll want an offensive card. Let's do Bug Bite. So each one of these will spawn inside of our hand and they'll be representing you're like, oh, this is the second card in your hand. Uh, I might even rotate them in a way that makes them look a little bit more pretty. One thing I'm also considering is how do we make these cards fit to where we can have up to six of them in our hand? So the problem being if I have a second character that the player themselves has to control. 
So it's six cards too many? I would love your opinions here, those of you here in chat. Like, is six cards too many, or do you think that's enough for people to understand? First of all, I don't have enough room for it, so it might be difficult. Or there's also the option of having three cards visible at a time. And so these three cards basically get destroyed at the end of the turn. And then you spawn the three cards for your other monster. I think is probably what we're leaning towards. Where it's kind of like you're always shuffling whatever cards are in your hand. So that's what we're going to work towards, I think. Talk to Miguel. I already filled out the form, but for the record, uh, didn't charge anything to build anything. But I would love to. Oh, okay, nice. Well, Roxy, I hope you... Uh, check out some of those offers because now you have that portfolio dude like all you got to do is show them this is what i've worked on this is what i can build for you and i think you'll be able to make some really cool stuff cool so each of these is going to have an animated decoration uh, i set this up on the first card so we can see here it's looping the up command and that loop is whenever i interact with it and if i choose a different card it's going to turn it off. So let's go ahead and set that up on another card. So we'll have the toggle behavior. We'll have an animated decoration. And it's gonna be doing the up, I believe. Yep, so up. And then we're doing and dot other. And we're doing interact. So it does appear that I need to have a specific tag for each variation. And the reason for that is by having each different tag, I'm allowing these cards to be interusable. So this hand.1 message is going to be exclusive because it has its own specific messages that it's outputting so that means i'm going to have three variations of this that can spawn in each of the three different slots i'm just saying these out loud to remind myself because this, these are the things that can go under the radar if i forget so this one it's going to have the speaker component that when i interact with it it's going to do interact dot hand dot two and that has its own line of messages and this one again we have the toggle behavior the animated decoration and our speaker component and this one is our hand dot three we want it to play its up animation I think this is an older version. So I should actually delete this and put the new one down. And we'll use a different buff. So we'll do number one here. So that way I can just test it with one energy. So we can see this one costs two energy, one energy, one energy. I'm calling them essences in the game, which I suppose is worth noting. So it plays the up animation. The toggle is going to be the interact. The off message will be the interact dot hand dot three. And then lastly, it needs the hand dot three tag. Cool. So let's just take a look at these. So every time I click one of these, it should play the animation. It should stop it as well if I touch it. And then this one was destroyed as soon as it spawned. So we can take a quick look at that. 
So it's sending out a destroy message, likely from one of these. But for now, I'm actually going to move these away. And then we don't want them to be going up and down yet. Instead, we want those to be turned off by default. Try it again. And so when I approach them, I touch them. This one is seemingly too far away or the interact message is not working. And then we also need to customize those health bars a little bit. So these are supposed to be turning off whichever one is being interacted with. So we can see interact.hand.2 is supposed to turn off the others. This one needed the hand.2 tag. Then we have that. Looks good. And then this one is talking to hands one and two whenever we interact with hand three. However, this one was too far away. And it was as simple as just kind of adjusting it to where it's closer to the character. Try it again. Good bite. So blade spikes right now is not working. We'll take another look here. Now I'm going to have this initially on and we'll see if it animates. It does. So the animation works. So what is not communicating properly? That's the question. So we can see here interact is working using the correct form of interact and so toggling it should turn it on if it's initially off and we saw that the up animation was working it's not being destroyed I'm unsure as to why the other ones are working, but this one is not. Let's make it closer. Okay. So I'm not able to interact with this at all. And I, okay. This is something we figured out last week and I am now remembering is it has to have the speaker component. So if you have an interact toggle on your asset, in order for the interact message to be received, there has to be a speaker component or a button behavior, door behavior. What else would be an option? A collectible. So all of those provide the interact functionality. And so now that we've added a message, AKA a speaker, we can add that important message as well, which was interact hand three. And we'll put it back there. And now it should work fine. That was the only thing it was missing. Yep. Uh, one thing I don't like is our blaze spikes and our deal one attack aren't matching the animation. Okay, so now I'm curious. If I were to have that up and down animation, is that going to follow the animation itself? Uh, if I put a indicator component on it. So let's find out. I can just add indicator component, we'll type in test. And we should see test text somewhere. I don't even see it. So our test text did not show up. 
Let's do size equals 44. I still don't see the test text. No test text. Huh. Well, let me swap cameras then. Because now I'm curious, so why not? We can explore it. We'll go to third person. I want to play these same animations. This time I want to see them move with the text above them. So that's what we're looking for here. So I'm adding an indicator to the test, and it's supposed to be going up and down. We can see the text itself actually is not moving, which is not good for our game. We would have wanted that to move with it. But good to test it. So now that we've tested that, I can remove it. A yeah, quick reminder for the builders in the space, uh, there is a survey hosted by Sandstorm here, where we're actively asking for Metaverse build rates. So if you are looking as a builder to start making money in the space, the survey is asking like, how much would you charge you personally for an experience built for somebody else? Like you are making a land experience, whether it's a social hub, a mini game, a NFT gallery, no matter what it is, how much would you charge to make that? And so that's the current survey in chat. Check it out. And you'll get a little something, something if you fill it out. So we're going to have to revisit that uh, interaction text. Uh, for now, I do have a solution where our cards will instead bounce forward and back. And so we can see how this would look. Sadly, I have to change the camera back. <laughs> so we're doing top down 24. We do want to lock the camera too. We can see I have the card selected, and now it's kind of doing like a an up and down motion. Looks a little bit more natural. Plus, the text is easier; it's legible to understand. So, one other thing is I want to lock that camera. Cool. So now I'm actually going to be adding a glow to the back of each card. So this tells the game or I should say it tells the player, hey, you've got this card selected. So it's just a more visible selection mechanic. I'm also gonna move these back a little bit just so we can see their border. We found out that it was just a different problem that I was having. So now this yellow card also has that same behavior of moving in and out. However, I don't want it to be visible if it's not the card being selected. So my first thought, does it play automatically? No, it does not. I might make a, a plant behavior out of this. Um, a health component wouldn't be bad either, but the health component has an explosion, so we don't want that. So I think instead, we're just going to make it a plant behavior. And I'm going to be spawning each one of these as it is whenever a card has been chosen, and then it's removed when a different card is chosen. So this one will be hand.1. And it's just going to be destroyed when interact.card.other is played and when end turn is played. I believe that's all it needed. 
then we just have to change the tag to where whenever I'm interacting with a different card, it removes that. Let's go ahead and explore this. And then we're going to be saving these as presets. So this one will be hand two. And this one should be hand dot three. But now if I go in and I click this one, the other two should be deleted. Okay. So these aren't communicating with them yet. So why is that? Uh, because they are sending out a different message. So interact dot hand dot other is the kill message. So I probably didn't type that. So we have <laughs> interact dot hand dot other. So I did interact card other. So great, the other two were removed. Now if I select a different card, this one's removed. Fantastic. So now we can make the asset spawners. So first things first, we got to save the presets. So this is going to be and we'll do hard glow one. This will be card dot glow dot two and card glow. Three. Nice. And now we will delete those. And we're going to be placing asset spawners that will spawn that same glow directly on top when the card is selected. So with preset three, one million dollars, OG. For the OG experience, yes. Like the Balenciagas of the metaverse. Hey, we can we can be the uh, high-profile luxury builders. Sure, why not? This will be interact hand dot three, which we also want that to destroy the old ones. So, for example, somebody could just click the same card over and over and over, and it'll just keep spawning them. I mean, there are people that would do that just to break the game for fun. Because clicking on this card sends out this message, this message, this message. However, this is only destroyed afterwards. So, yes, we would probably want that. Uh, so, interact dot hand dot three I believe is the message on all of these just checking interact dot hand dot three that's correct okay so we're going to add that same message and then resave these presets because again we're just kind of like future proofing these are the types of things I think about whenever I'm kind of like developing is like how can this break and if I encounter a way to you know make something break I try my best to fix it going forward. That way I don't, you know, build a mechanic that can easily just be swept, you know, completely destroyed by one false move. So if you build with that in mind, you will prevent unnecessary breakage. All right, and so now my spawners should be working properly. Uh, we'll go ahead and test that. Gonna remove all of them. I removed this one uh, too quickly. That's also because we interacted with one that was already there. So it's not a big deal. Cool. So that one's working. If I click it again, it should have removed the old one. However, clicking it again also made it appear again. 
But if I were to select a different card, it would remove it. So that is one, I guess, flaw. Is I can't click it again and remove it. Maybe interact. We'll try that. And then again, we have to remember that speaker and interact messages have to be prevalent or present in order for other behaviors, such as potentially plant, can be removed. So let's go ahead and try that. And I'll even save this as a preset because we do use an asset spawner. We'll try that again. So again, we're spawning a new one. I don't know why I selected this one when I selected this card. This one's supposed to be stopping. When I click other cards. Maybe we didn't set up that health component yet. So this one's supposed to be telling it to stop. It's like, hey, stop. So this one doesn't have a tag. Oh, I put the wrong message here. This one's supposed to be the other message. Ouch, it's enough. Okay, so we've spawned the yellow border. Click it again. It does stop. However, the new glow is still there. I don't like. Hi, people. Hi, VBox. Welcome in. So yeah, with our trading card game series, uh, there's a lot of mechanics happening behind the scenes, and it's very difficult to go into, you know, like describing how they all work. You know, just for those of you new here, if you have questions, uh, and that can be about anything relative to the sandbox, please do, you know, ask in the live chat. Uh, everything I'm working on right now is kind of my own personal project that Sandstorm allows me to make. But if you have questions on like how certain things work, such as a quest mechanic or melee enemies or trying to make a platform uh, disappear when you touch it, you know, things like of those nature, like we will gladly go on these side quests to help answer your questions. Uh, but for the most part, I'm just kind of working on things that I find interesting and uh, card games being one of them. So I'm trying to make a card game in the sandbox. So we want these interaction mechanics to where it's going to remove that golden order if I touch it again. So what we can do is have an interact message also trigger specifically for these glows. So we can see here I had an interact that removed it, but instead I'll have it do interact uh, dot glow dot three. And I'm going to go ahead and make sure this is all lowercase. Because most of my messages are lower, lowercase. And so if I interact with this card while this is here, in theory, I can, well, I won't be able to send a message to itself. So for example, right now it's got a plant behavior where if it receives this message, interact.glow.3, it would be destroyed. However, I can't send the same message. So we can see here speaker component. When I interact with it, it's sending out interact.glow to three. That's not exactly how it works. Instead, if this is available, I have to send out a new message that then bounces back and sends a second message. So because this is the second message, I'm going to have an interact.glow.3.2 and an interact.glow.3. But we can just test it just for the sake of testing it to see if it communicates with itself. I don't believe it will. So we can see here it's still active. Uh, we also want to raise this a little bit. Should be good. Yeah, again, if you guys have questions, just know that this is a good place to ask them. Like, I, I try my best, you know, as an educator in the space during my live streams to also have that open forumness 
But I think a lot of you are just here because you just enjoy the sandbox and you enjoy the uh, sand fam. This will be our interact glow and we're going to be sending out the glow dot two. And that's going to go to this yellow preset. We want to see if we marked it with anything. Uh, it does have a tag and dot three. So we can add that to the preset. Okay, so now it should technically turn off. Oh, wait, I don't think I saved the preset. So that would have been embarrassing. <laughs> Let's hope it works. <laughs> Either way, it'll be embarrassing. Okay, so I select the card. Yellow glow should appear. Yellow glow has appeared. I select the card again. The yellow car glow needs to disappear. So right now, a new glow has appeared, which we can see is a little bit too high, and it did not disappear. Oh, because my preset had the incorrect message. We needed the dot too. Wait, this is number three. Okay, I think, I mean, I'm pretty certain this will work now. Things considered. We select the card, glow appears. Select the card again, glow needs to disappear and the card stops moving. Nice. Cool, so now we can uh, just basically copy these same settings over to the other ones. We're making a new message that can kill it. And this is the second card. And then we also have to add that interaction of a speaker component. So this is a cool kind of like side mechanic that we've kind of recently discovered is having that interaction message that can in turn uh, be used for other things. So I'm basically interacting with two different objects right now. And so that interaction message can basically be split into two other messages. And you just kind of like stack interaction messages in a way, which could, it has benefits, I'm sure. I just don't know them yet. <laughs> so interact.glow.2. Didn't save our message, there it is. And then again, we're adding a speaker component and we're adding interact.glow.1.2. So second step of the interaction. And then we have the first step coming from this one. So it's basically telling itself to turn off if it's active. So interact.glow.1.2. So one thing we uh, talked about in our sandstorm gathering, our little meeting, was the potential of me making Decentraland assets in Blender. Is that something you guys would be interested in? Just curious. Dot glow dot two and interact dot glow dot two point two, right? It's going to hand to it again. This goes to hand one. We have interact dot glow dot one and interact dot glow dot 1.2 nice cool so those should be set up now i just gotta save these presets r dash glow dash one and car dash glow dash two okay save So I'll be streaming for about 20 more minutes. 
little reminder here for those builders now joining. We are looking at the sandstorm to, uh, you know, ask more about like what you would charge for building something in the metaverse. So building on a land, whether it's a gallery and experience, you know, like a single player experience or a multiplayer experience, how much would you charge? And so that forum that I just posted in Twitch chat is us asking. And then we're also giving a slight small reward, you know, for filling that out. But yeah, we're looking for people active in the space. So that's you guys. Test this. So now I need to set up the asset spawners. And we saved our presets, so the asset spawners should work. Hopefully Game Maker doesn't crash because it's thinking about all the things it needs to break. You can already see I'm kind of overwhelmed on uh, game logic. Wow, it's taking its time. Save! Make sure you save your work, everybody. It's always a good reminder. Your game takes a full minute to load. So we're spawning these assets underneath cards, and they're spawning the card glow relative to its position in the hand. And it's spawning it when we're interacting with that hand. So interact.hand.1, this one will be interact.hand.2. Great, so now we should be able to select each one of these cards. This one maybe needed a reset. So right now it's not spawning our card. This one spawned it. So why is this one not spawning? Let's take a look. So we're sending out the message required, which is interact.hand.2, which should be set from this card. Which if we scroll down, we have interact.hand.2. And so I'm talking to this card. In doing so, it's sending out that message, interact.hand.2. That's supposed to be sending out this message, required, interact.hand.2, which is spawning the preset. So what is wrong with this then? Interact.hand.2, interact glow. We'll just resave the preset and I'm going to delete it. Okay, so it spawned it, removed it. Not spawning another one though, it only spawned one. So the delay here. Must be too long. It's a, it's a one second delay. And it did spawn it the one time. Use preset visible offset. It's not a one time thing. Is my message toggled to one time? Message is not. Uh, we, have an, we have a delay. We, I need to adjust the delay. Then this message here is only removing that glow after a zero second delay. And only when the glow is already active. So I think my interaction is actually too close. So I believe there were a couple scenarios where I was in between cards. So we can see here that multiple are being activated at the same time. So right now my interactions are a little bit too close, which is kind of a problem. So I need to spread out my cards a little bit more. That's why my stuff wasn't spawning correctly.
So we're going to use as much of the space as we can. I might have to make my cards smaller. Which is a bit of a pain. Now it's working fine. It's not removing this one though. We'll take a quick look at that. We need to be sending out the message Message being sent out is interact.glow.1.2. Interact.glow.1.2. And we'll be reducing the delay here. Oh, that's why. So I'm sending out the message incorrectly. So we want interact.glow.1. Then we'll save it again. What's nice about these glow effects is now it's going to apply to any card that appears. Like it's not only this card. So I'm basically making a mechanic that allows me to select a card and it'll work for any card in that same space. So the new problem is selecting a character. So if I wanted to select, let's say with my heat spray ability, now that I know I have it selected, it's an offensive ability. So I wanted to target, let's say the enemy monster. My enemy monster needs to have that asker behavior in front of it to where it's like, hey, I choose you. You know, I select this character to attack. And so what I think will happen is I will have cards that allow you to pick between left and right. So we're going to have askers that spawn on the left and right, but we're also going to have askers on the left and right that affect allied monsters as well. So we, that's why I added this card. So this card is called Blaze Spikes, which if you're unfamiliar with like RPGs, if there is fire on something and you attack it, you know, it's gonna deal damage back to you. So that's the idea. You're kind of like defending yourself it's giving you a buff to where if someone attacks you, you take damage. And so that reciprocal damage, we're going to be adding in a later stream. But I want the ability, and this will be the next thing we work on, to select my character. To give them the bonus, and thus also play an animation. And then we also want to destroy the card that we just played. So let's begin setting that all that all that up. <laughs> so we can see here I've added asker behaviors, and these are what I represent asker behaviors with. They're lamps that you just have to face and you interact with. And what's going to happen is if I place my character in the corner, I'll be able to select my ally. And if I place my character in the corner, top corner, I'll be able to select an enemy. But for the sake of simplicity, I believe, and also because we're using so much real estate down here, I will want it to be directly centered. And so both options are going to be spawning or in the middle of our playing field. And that way, there's kind of like more wiggle room, I would, I guess you could say, for me to select the right character, but also not select the wrong card. So that would be the problem, is selecting the wrong card when I'm trying to play a different card. And so we're trying to think about these things in advance. Cool. So we've selected a card, and so I've already set up a little bit of this, so we'll just kind of walk through it real quick. I'm interacting with this asker behavior. When I interact with it, it says, do you want to use the card selected on your Firefly? So we can see the bottom one is affecting my ally. I could say yes, or I can say, let me think about it. So we're giving the player the option to kind of walk away 
and be like, no, let me uh, pick a different card. Like we're giving them that option. Or we can say, yes, it's kind of like locking in like, oh, I've selected this card. I've selected this character to play it on. And so when we say yes, it sends out this message, interact.hand.1.activate, which we're going to destroy this card. And the way I believe I'll set this up is it's going to respawn it to a tag, which will be the graveyard. Then the graveyard is going to detect whatever card it was and play the relative effect. I don't really have any other way to trigger it. And we can see here I have these health messages and right now they're just set to destroy. So this is where we get to customize it. So if I respawn it to a tag when it's destroyed, which we can see we have the activate message, we'll destroy it. It's going to be destroyed and it'll respawn at the graveyard. So once it spawns over here, we want to be able to detect that, hey, this is our heat spray attack. And we'll also be detecting that, hey, heat spray attack targeting this character, right? This is getting more complicated by the second. But that's fun. It's the fun part. Um, so how can I tell it? that I'm attacking this card. Okay, we're gonna be enabling. And this is something I set up during our first couple streams. Uh, we have message broadcasters on both enemies. And so we're, we're working solely from an enemy targeting card right now. So just walking through the process real quick. We interact with the enemy toggle, it's going to be sending out that message. We don't need an indicator, no indicator necessary. But yeah, we in interacted with the asker behavior. We sent out the interact.hand.1.activate. Uh, what had triggered was because we selected this particular asker behavior, which we'll need to customize the uh, choices a little bit more but it's going to toggle on our message broadcasters. One of which, one of which is going to be dealing damage. That damage can only be dealt to the one we're interacting with because that's the one that got toggled on. So we can see here, I've added a toggle behavior to where this damage dealing and like asset will not deal damage because it won't turn on unless I've walked into this section. And if I walk into this section, we can see it flips it, so it turns it off. And so if I'm standing in this radius right now, we can see I have the TCG dot left. So that allows me to turn on, you know, a damage deal dealing ability specifically to this area. If I have an AOE ability, that's where things might get a little bit complicated. But we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. So lastly, we want when this card is destroyed for it to register that, hey, this card has been destroyed. Send out one point of damage because that's what this card specifically does. Heat spray. So how do I tell my graveyard? to detect a specific card. Well, unfortunately, I'm going to have to uh, make a detector over here for every single type of card, at least. At least we can target with the mechanic I've already set up with the, the left detector. So if I'm on the left side, it's targeting whatever's on the left side. If I'm on the right side, it's targeting whatever is on the right side. But I'm now making a speaker component that is detecting heat spray. 
we'll be able to look in our card here and see that he has this very specific tag tcg slash fire slash six so if tcg slash fire slash six is detected in our graveyard it's going to spit out that damage effect and we saw here was tcg or message required attack dot one so we're doing attack dot one if this is detected so we'll do attack dot one and we also need our graveyard tag or discard pile so discard pile or graveyard it's the same thing i'll probably use both great so with all that said i'm gonna test it <laughs> i like how sure of myself i seem Okay, so we're on the left side, we've selected the card, we interact with this, he says, do you want to use the card and select it on the Frost Toad? We say yes. It appears over there, we can see I've dealt one point of damage to the Frost Toad. And generally speaking, we would end our turn, but the way I want to structure this game is you can expend as much energy as you have. So if you have a lot of low cost cards, you'll be able to play all of them. Yeah, it worked. It, it worked. Uh, one thing I would change, though, is rotate this and place it directly in the middle. And then another thing we'll be setting up, and I could probably just do this. So right now, a card dot detected is to end my turn. Uh, so I'm going to set this to the side. And instead... What was I thinking? I lost my train of thought. I want to kill. Okay, I need a void behavior. So we're going to be making a void behavior. That when I end my turn, it's just going to destroy whatever card was in this graveyard. So we're going to do void behavior. And it's going to be on receive message. End dot turn. And then we also have to destroy this void behavior. So it's basically going to turn off and then destroy itself. And that's important because uh, we don't want it to be constantly on. But that also means we need to... Uh, I think a reset will work, but we'll, we'll try a reset. We can also do respawn to tag and use the graveyard. But it's going to basically destroy itself after a card is destroyed. And how does it destroy, it, destroy itself? Well, we need a secondary end turn message. I believe we have coming out from start turn. So we can use start turn, which should be coming from one of these. I just want to find it real quick. Yeah, start.turn, which does talk to voids. So we'll use start turn. And then we also want to have destroy all except from list turned on. Have don't destroy turned on. Instant death message will be start turn. And we want to make sure our lamps aren't destroyed because those are in the area. So destroy all except from list. And we're removing lamp detect and lamp logic. I think those are the only ones in the area. Okay, let's uh, give it a try. See if it works. But then we're going to be wrapping up the show. So thanks everybody for watching. Cool. So we started our turn. We select a card. The card gives us an animation showing it that it's selected. Oh, I'm thinking about it. You know what? I'll do bug bite. We can see bug bite instead. It's like, oh, you don't, you want to do that one instead? Okay. Heat spray. All right. Changed my mind. I'm deciding on heat spray. However, I did notice our asker behavior was destroyed. <laughs> and so that's because our asker behavior is going to be associated with two different types of cards. 
buff cards and attack cards. And so right now, it's just destroying based on card one. But I'm just keeping that in mind for next time. So I've selected Heat Spray. Heat Spray has dealt the damage, so there's one point of damage up at the top left. And then it shows up in my discard pile. When I end my turn, it was supposed to have destroyed the card. So it did not destroy our card. So let's take a look at our void behavior again. So the void behavior is turning on with end.turn. Which should have been coming out of this message, which we just talked to. So end.turn. The message should be received. We saw the card was there. It's destroying all except from lists. So it should destroy everything except these. And then start turn is what tells it to be respond and start over. So let's go ahead and have toggle behavior on. Let's see if this improves things. We'll try it again. Check, check. And turn. So right now it's actually destroying my text, but not my card. So that's interesting. So it's not destroying the parent of a preset. Is it too high? The card appears. We can see it actually destroys the text, the number pads. So the number pads have been destroyed. It's not destroying my card. I'm a little bit confused there. But that's a challenge for another day. Thank you everybody for tuning in.